This is my day trip to Northern Italy, Modena, Ferrari town. We've been asked to drive the most important new car of them all, the flagship Enzo Ferrari. But first, there's time to soak up the atmosphere because here, there's something for the Tifosi around every corner. Filming with Ferrari is a privilege, albeit a uniquely Italian experience. This is just the, well, discussion the PR reps had before we filmed at the factory. But this wasn't my main concern, because me and the test driver don't really get on. I upset the test driver last time I was here in the F50. Dario Battuzzi. I dared to challenge what gears he was going to use in different corners, and um, he seems to take it very personally as an insult. He thinks I'm an English idiot, I think. But I wasn't going to let that bother me. Not when there's a £420,000 car to take my mind off it. Only 349 Enzos will be built, the theory being you should always make one less than you think you can sell. It has a V12, 660 horsepower, does 220 miles an hour, and only comes in yellow or red. The funny thing is you see pictures before you come in magazines and you get this idea of it and you... You think it looks a bit ugly in the magazines and you start criticising it because, you know, you get a bit picky. And then you see it for real and all the hair stands up on your arms. And it looks stunning. The naked eye can see so much more detail than photographs show because I just noticed that this wing, you don't see that in the photos at all. It's a proper aerofoil. It is the detail touches. Little rear lights. Much of I like little silver bits they put on it, spoiling all their advertising stickers. Where's Dario? Is he here yet? Yeah? Oh, there he is at the door. Robin quit as a shot of Dario over there. There's Dario. The doorway. Hope he hasn't spotted me yet. He always wears the shades. You can't see his eyes behind the shades. The other big feature of the car is this first ever production car use of carbon brakes. You can see the mottled effect, very different from steel. The whole point about these is, in the past, racing-wise, they only work when they're really incredibly hot. And when they're not hot, they don't work and it pulls the car. Now, they say, even on a stone-cold day, they work straight away. <laughs> and finally, I'm in an Enzo Ferrari. Apparently, when you buy your own, the pedals can have about 16 different adjustments to suit you. All the basic seats got 16, 16 different sizes. Still slides backwards and forwards manually, mind you. And uh, at long last, when it started with the Ferrari 360, you've now got adjustable steering wheels. Because the days prior to the 360, they were horrible driving positions. Now they're brilliant, fantastic. Real Formula One steering wheel. There's those lights that apparently come on with the revs. You've got all sorts of mode settings here. Traction control settings there. Of course, now, as you'd expect with the Ferrari, paddle gear change up on the right, down on the left. Big start button to fire up that uh, six litre V12, which I can see in the rear view mirror. Very nice. The do's and don'ts briefing is an unwelcome delay before driving, but tells us the day's schedule and gives us a chance to see a film of Mr. Schumacher testing the car for himself on the same circuit. <laughs> but now I've had the rules and regulations. This is the trouble, you still think it's the best job in the world because I get to drive these cars. They've told us we get five laps each. I'm not allowed to switch the traction control off. They put a chicane in the very, very short straight here at Fiorano. So there's rules and regulations. I'm okay, it's a half million pound car, but uh, with the McLaren F1 or the Bugatti Zonda, I get a whole day with the car and at least I can get to feel it. But, um, there's a lot of journalists all over the world. In fact, they've only allowed eight journalists, only one television presenter from England driving the car, and eight uh, right motoring journalists, so it is fairly exclusive. Our day was shared with the Italian daily press, who went first, followed by the Germans. Well, it has to be said that neither were necessarily pushing the car to its full limit all of the time. Mind you, I could understand why. 
with just five laps, sort of two choices. Either go out and make it easier for yourself by spinning off and embarrassing, or else going slowly and not getting to the full limit of the car. And it's that balance between having a bit of a gung ho, because you want to give it a bit of stick when you've only got five laps in a Ferrari, Enzo Ferrari. Never drive it again in my life, probably. But it's a lot of nervous hanging around. Nervous because there's a lot at stake. With Formula One telemetry recording the car's every move, there's a certain bit of pride in registering the fastest journalist lap time. Dario, who takes every opportunity to impress, gets round in about 1 minute 30. My mate Dario's out now. I bet he'll have the traction control switched off, but this is his favourite playground, this left-handed hairpin. He tries to light it up and show, oh, Dario. He's got phenomenal car control. He gets Ferraris more sideways than uh, I've ever seen anyone. But then he lives with them. It's all right, we drive them every day. We get five laps with the traction control on. Well, it's one o'clock, and in Italy, everything stopped for lunch. There's already been about uh, three programme changes. I still haven't driven the car. The Germans have got their cameras in this one. They've literally got their towels down first and gone off for a tour of the factory. So I'm just going to have to keep on waiting. Plus two, they say lunch is over, you're in. Another change of plan. But I am finally out on the track in an Enzo Ferrari. For the first impression, you get that lovely V12 engine behind you, the blip of the down change that comes automatically, and a huge surge <laughs> breaking over the bridge. It's very light, the steering, and the nose turns in surprisingly easily. And then down to this tight first gear hairpin. Pull one gear, pull the second, turn the front response, steering very light, floor the throttle, and oh, and the traction control was killing me. Sorry, but I can't drive a Ferrari with that on. I think I've hit the right button. They didn't tell us how to get rid of it. Now the Ferrari's alive. The lights on the wheels scream up through the revs. Is it? Oh, it is. That blip, you feel the rear end squirm a bit if you change down too early. You want to be later on that. But then, oh! Break, blip, change down later, Tim. That's what this car wants. Now I haven't got traction. Hit the horn again as I cross my hands. But now the car leaps out of that corner. Left, right. Feel the G force building up. Fourth. Fifth gear. Turning and braking. Clamp on. I can't believe how good the brakes are. But I believe that I'm 600 horsepower right underneath my foot. It's been five minutes and it's gone. And uh, it's hard to know how to sum up this Enzo Ferrari after a short uh, experience as that, but it's, it's perhaps not as elegant nor as practical as a McLaren F1. It's, it's not as exotic as the Pagani Zonda. But what it does do fantastically well is what Ferrari are fantastic at. It goes around racing circuits very, very quickly indeed. Just one loose end then, 
my lap time of 1 minute 34 may have been 4 seconds slower than the great Dario, but not bad considering I'd only had 5 minutes and he's here every day. And it was, I'm proud to report, the quickest journalist time of all. So, what did Dario think of that? Bello. There you go. Bello. Friends again.